In this video I'm looking at the equilibrium question from the 2017 paper 1. So there's the first part of the question. We're given an equilibrium for the manufacture of hydrogen and we've got to explain in terms of Le Chatelier's principle conditions of temperature and pressure for a maximum yield and also then explain why operational conditions used by the chemical industry may be different. So if you want to have a go at answering that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready. So I'm going to start with temperature. The first thing we need to establish is that the forward reaction is endothermic from that positive delta H. And so because the forward reaction is endothermic, a high temperature is going to favour the forward reaction. Moving on to pressure now, we need to look at how many moles we've got each side. So we've got two moles of gas on the left versus four moles on the right. And so therefore, because we've got more moles on the right hand side, the product side, we're going to need a lower pressure. So is industry likely to use those conditions? Well, obviously not. So temperature wise, they're likely to use a lower temperature to reduce energy consumption and to produce fewer greenhouse emissions. And pressure, low pressures have slow rates of reaction. So they're likely to use a higher pressure to increase the rate. So the next part of the question is this calculation. So if you want to process all that information, have a go, pause the video, Play on when you're ready. So the first part of the question, we've got to write the expression for Kc and state its units. So products over reactants, concentration. So remember we use the numbers balancing the equation as powers. So it will be the concentration of SO3 squared all over the concentration of SO2 multiplied by the concentration of O2. And units wise, well, we've got moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top, but cubed on the bottom, and so that cancels down to 1 over moles per decimeter cubed, and bringing that to the top, dm cubed mole to the minus 1. So moving on to the calculation, so in terms of moles at equilibrium, we were told we had that many equilibrium moles of SO2, that many moles of O2, and obviously we need to find out how many moles of SO3 we've got. So given those numbers and the fact that the volume was quoted at 400 cm cubed, three significant figures seems to be appropriate. So there's that Kc expression again. And remember the Kc was given our 3.045 times 10 to the 4. We've got the moles of these two things at equilibrium, so we can turn them into concentrations for here. So we'll do that now. So the equilibrium concentrations, moles over volume, so the SO2 concentration is 0.135 and the O2 is 0.0675. So feeding all of that into the Kc expression, we get that. And rearranging it, we get the SO3 concentration squared comes out with being that. I've kept the full number in the calculator for there. So the SO3 concentration would be the square root of this. And that comes out at 6.12, but remember we're in moles per decimeter cubed at the moment and they wanted the number of moles. So moles equals concentration times volume. So it comes out, the three significant figures, at 